Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Fagam Radian here in Huntsville, Alabama for the Association of the United States Army's annual Global Force Symposium, the number one gathering of U.S. Army leaders from around the world to talk about the service's future, its acquisition budgets uh, and strategy. Industry is here, thought leaders, media, and more. Our coverage here is sponsored by L3 Technologies and Leonardo DRS. And we're positively honored to have with us Jeff White, uh, who is the Principal Deputy Secretary of, uh, uh, Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for Research, Development, and Acquisition sir. Uh, it's great seeing you again, uh, and thanks very much for the time. Thank you. I'm, it's great to be here, and it's great to see you. Um, and so, uh, X uh, Tech uh, Search, uh, was uh, this was the, the first time uh, out, uh, $250,000 top prize to the winning uh, company. There were 12 other teams. There's going to be a second phase of the competition uh, that's going to be uh, resolved between now and, uh, and AUSA. Talk to us about the competition and why uh, it's so important as the Army tries to accelerate acquisition, but also speed technology development at a time of great power competition. Sure. Well, x is important to us because, you know, too often in the Army acquisition and all the services acquisition, we tend to look at what I'd call the usual suspects when we go to procure a weapon system or whatever. You look at there, you've got eight or nine big integrators. They, they have a lot of buying power. They have a lot of technology, and they dominate the marketplace. But they're not the people who come up with the new and the innovative ideas. The really true new groundbreaking ideas come from these little tiny companies uh, the big integrators are exactly that, they're integrators. So we can either trust the integrators to go out and find the exciting new technologies and tell us about it, or more appropriately and a better solution would be that we know about them ahead of time and we tell the big integrators, we want some of that, we want you to put that into our weapon systems. So X -Search, uh, X -X Tech Search it gives us a platform to go out and find those small innovative companies that don't have the big proposal writing departments, don't have the means and the horsepower to participate in traditional DOD RFPs proposal process and get their technology in in front of us so we can see what it does, uh, we can understand it, and then we can leverage it in our future uh, proposals and weapon systems. Um, it, it is a, a, a massive search, and absolutely, you can see that from the customer standpoint, because uh, often, you know, the, the large companies are vested in the solution they have, as opposed to potentially a solution you you, uh, you may want. Very Talk true. to us a little bit about this process uh, that you use to try to get those best ideas, how you sift them, and how did you end up picking uh, the winner, because uh, $250,000 for a small concern is a lot of money. Yeah. Well, we've leveraged AUSA, as you know, uh, Association of the United States Army is a great partner for the U.S. Army. Uh, we work with them uh, to get our message out, and uh, they help us equally in getting our message, uh, getting our our, uh, our programs and our, our talking points out. So, leveraging AUSA, uh, we went out to the to the world, if you will, and told all the small businesses we could find that we were interested in their technology, and uh, you know, if they didn't have a pathway to the Army, here was, here was their chance. So I think we started with around 300 small companies that came in and showed us what they had. Uh, from there, they were down-selected uh, through a series of gates, you know, first about half, then down to about 50, then down to ultimately the uh, 24 and, and the 12 winners you saw today. Uh, so it's been a rigorous process. Uh, again, they were all great companies. Some of them had products that were more relevant to what our requirements were today, and that's that's where you saw the winners. And of course, you know, for the for the grand prize winner, that was the technology that was most relevant, most mature, and most producible. You know, the uh, the technology that that we saw as being a definite part of the future of, of uh, Army acquisition going forward. Um, you know, um, what do you think are the cultural keys uh, to getting the whole uh, organism and organization better engaging with some of these small contractors and small innovative companies? Each one of the services, you know, Dr. Roper and I have talked about it, Hondo Gertz and I have talked about this a little bit, about how do you get these uh, and also get the visibility from a senior le leadership perspective to sort of more frame questions and, and get that interface and dialogue going. How is that process going and what are the right cultural ways of thinking about this uh, organizationally so that you're your both sides of, of that relationship are maximizing the impact. Sure. Well, we've got to do it non-traditional ways. As you know, the, the traditional way to get into the Army and get into defense acquisition programs is to respond to RFPs and, uh, and go through a formal acquisition process on a FAR-based acquisition. As you know, even the major companies can spend millions of dollars uh, getting in into those types of programs. These small non-traditional companies, they don't have that kind of budget and they don't have the type of people that understand the rules and the FAR-based uh, 
uh, regulations in order to compete effectively. So we have to have a lot more of these types of competitions where we draw them in and we bring them into a space where we're not using our own unique DOD language, our far based contracting rules, and give them an opportunity to show us what they have in a non-FAR based uh, comp, you know, acquisition and uh, competition process. I think we need to do a better job uh, in terms of cross-leveling. The Air Force has had some great ideas. I just saw their, uh, their competition that culminated the other day. I think they wrote them checks right on the spot and that, that's a terrific idea using the, uh, the impact card uh, in order to do it. Uh, we need to look at leveraging that among ourselves, uh, but then I think as a community we need to get together and uh, take the best ideas across the board and leverage those in our future competitions is certainly something that I'll be taking back uh, to the Under Secretary of Defense for uh, acquisition and sustainment and suggest that maybe we can do something at a broader level. Uh, yeah, so I was going to say, because each one of the, the services have their own competitive things, right? With Spark Tank is more uh, on the troop side of things in the Air Force, but it did have uh, that, uh, um, I, don't, I, I talked to Dr. Roper about it, but the pitch day uh, in New York uh, recently. Um, you know, do, do you see there uh, a lot, so you see a lot of opportunity for the services to work actually more closely together to be able to push these ideas up so that they get your visibility? Yeah, I think anytime you break down the stovepipes, you get a win, right? Because we, we see the population that we get by the uh, by our uh, partners, whether it be AUSA or you know our contracting community, our uh, the various consortiums uh, that produce OTAs and uh, and proposals for us. Uh, but we can't reach the whole world, so by dividing it up, we're not leveraging the synergy we could get to put it together. We also need to leverage those non-traditional contracts. The OTAs we talked about a lot during this uh, this forum, uh, that's a way to get to a, a, a small business on a non-FAR based uh, contract with more commercial terms that they understand and uh, and get increased competition into our tech base. Uh, one very last question before you go. Um, so once you pick this uh, idea, right, if it's a game-changing idea, and a lot of these um, smaller companies are actually thinking very big, even if they're very, very small, about how to change the game. Um, do, does there need to be a cultural uh, uh, change in terms of getting that idea and then driving it through a system that may not want to embrace some change? You know, they, they're the systems you know, the approaches you know, the tactics you know, the strategies you know, as opposed to saying, hey, wait a minute, guys, you know, this small thing can actually fundamentally change how we do and actually be an empowering device. What's the sort of cultural leadership change that has to happen to drive and to husband and shepherd some of these uh, capabilities and actually get them fielded, especially if they're really game changing, because that means breaking people people's rice balls. Yeah. yeah, you hit it on the head. Cultural change is hard, right? It's the hardest thing you can possibly do. So we need to set the example at the uh, ALT leadership and embrace these types of new technologies. We need to help our, our PEOs and our PMs think about the way they do business in a different way. We need to keep hammering them on speed. I always hold up an iPhone, you know, and I say, uh, you know, when, how old is your iPhone? Not many people have one that's more than two years. And then you look and say, how old is that Humvee you're riding in? Uh, probably more than two years old. We need to meet, move at the speed of innovation, not the speed of the 1970s industrial era. And by pointing it out, and by showing them these uh, these young, innovative companies with the marvelous ideas they have, and getting them to think, how would you put this into your program, right? Because part of cultural change is, is by not threatening them. I'm not going to shut your program down in order to do something new. How do you leverage this technology into your program to make your program better? That's what gets them excited and gets them thinking about these types of things. Jeff White, the Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of the United States Army for uh, Research for Acquisition Technology and Logistics, sir. Uh, thanks very much. Really appreciate it and look forward to seeing you back in Washington. Fantastic competition. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you.